What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining us. We have a bit of a technical episode this week and we're going to be focusing on the BMW E36 or E46, M52, M54 oil pump. There's a modification we do on the oil pumps to stop the nut turning off. I'm Jacques from SSBB Builds. I've been racing front wheel drive for over eight years. I won a championship, came runner up and two others. I'm building this BMW to find out what it's like to be involved with rear wheel drive cars and the classic BMW heritage. Join me on this discovery as I share my passion. On a normal road car, the car and the pump and the design is more than capable of dealing with the loads, the vibrations, the frequencies, etc. But as soon as you introduce the motor to a race environment, things change. So on a timing change system, there's a high tension side and a low tension side. Normally, this is referred to as T1 and T2. T1 is the high tension side, T2 is the low tension side. Under acceleration, this is not a problem. The problem comes in on these motors at high RPM. So when you hit 7,000 or so, or you rev them past that, and then you get off the power, it picks up this resonant frequency. On the deceleration, the load on the pump is what eventually undoes the nut. And so we do a couple of modifications to counter this. So in this episode, we're gonna cover those two in detail. Now I did cover these in the full build, but uh, we're gonna do it in a bit more depth so that we can share with everybody how this is done and what the details are about it. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Common thing is to drill a hole in the nut so we can lock wire it to stop it from spinning off. So basically we need a hole that can allow this wire to go through something like that. It's a 1.2.6. We're gonna punch a hole, punch a uh, punch, Punch, you know, punch a hole, I don't know. We're gonna make a punch mark so the drill doesn't run. Now the goal is, the objective is to drill basically straight through these two places. I don't know, I can't find the words anymore. The problem we're having is the drill bit is too small for the chuck on the drill, so I'm gonna try and use this. Okay, and there we go. All right, so I've had this chemically cleaned us. So we're going to assemble it. I'm just going to use brake cleaner because it's been sitting on the shelf for a while. I'm just going to use brake cleaner to get all anything else out. That's magnesium. That's cast alex. You can buy oil pump rebuild kits. Normally that is what you see here. It's the gear, the main gear, the uh, input shaft, the the valve and uh, little bits. However, the problem with oil pumps, an oil pump is a hydraulic pump. Where you see the wear on the oil pump is not in between the gears. It's actually in the tolerance on the casings. Because the tolerance is so fine, the pressure is generated in between the gears, yes, but the casing has got a very fine tolerance between the gears. And if you get wear on the casing, that's where you will lose your oil pressure so it doesn't help you go buy an, a rebuild kit with all the gears and put it back into an old worn casing you're still going to have the same problem unfortunately i cannot get a replacement pump but looking at this pump this pump is in very very good condition so i'm confident that we can reuse this and we're not going to have any issues so you can use normal oil for this i just like to use assembly lube because it's slightly thicker and it doesn't run away after it sits for a while. This will just help us with any wear, premature wear, as well as um, building up oil pressure when we crank the motor for oil pressure. Then we need to put this bad boy in there. Now some guys use grease. I'm not a fan of grease on oil pumps. I just don't like the idea of grease getting mixed up in the oil. Same direction basically. So these have obviously got little dowels. It looks like when this oil pump is running, the scavenge pipe will sit in the sump like that. And then it sucks the oil up into the oil pump and then transfers it to that case, that part of the casing. This thing here, which we're going to assemble now, that's the pressure relief valve. So we'll get into that. 
What we do now, we just put these nuts on. Hey. Righty, so that is the pressure relief valve. If the pressure build up here is too high and it overcomes the tension in the spring, what will happen is that piston will push back and it will blow oil through there and relieve the pressure. But there we go, one times rebuilt oil pump. That goes on there, like so. And then the nut we just drilled, it's a reverse thread, so loosen to tighten. So with lock wire, less is more until you run out. <laughs> so this will loosen that way, right? In a tightening way. So you want to either lock it, you can lock it like that, but I think that'll be good enough. So it, it's once it's locked around there, it's impossible that it can come off. You want to overdo it because then you will break the wire. Now we trim it off, so I'm going to get the side cutters. Like that. And push this piece up so it can't catch on anything. There we go. So now the nut to loosen must come off in a tightening way, so it will loosen off in that rotation and the lock wire will prevent it, even if the nut comes loose, it won't be able to come off. Also something to note about lock wire, you don't want tension on it. It's similar to an electrical cable that's in a race car, you don't want the electrical cable under tension the whole time because the, the uh, frequencies will eventually cause the cable to break. Same with this, the frequency with this and any lock wire on a race motor or race car will cause it to eventually fatigue and break. So the lock wire must be there but loose, not under high tension. So there we go. If you want to see some more of this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Just click on the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you're good to go. Alright, so it is time to do this tensioner. Cool, I think the tensioner is going to go on like this. Something like that. So what we need to do, do the measurements, and what we're going to do is drill a hole into here. We have to cover all of this up. There, so there's our mark right there. There we go. So I've marked the hole. Okay, so we are tapping M7 by 1. So the 6.25 is the drill we need. So you'll see we put a rag in there to stop anything going through. Now, that should work like that. Beautiful. All right, so we got the oil pump on, drilled the hole for the tensioner. We are now going to put the tensioner in. So, dab a Loctite. Okay. 
Okay. All right, that's going to be a wrap for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, you know what to do. And I hope that you can use this information going forward with your build. Anyway, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.